Thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, happy to, to see you all here. So I'm going to be talking um, about Brouwer modern obstructions that require arbitrarily many Brouwer classes. I'll explain all of these uh, terms that are in the title. But before I get started, I want to say everything is joint work with Jen Berg, Carlo Pagano, Bjorn Prunin, Mikhail Stoll, Nicholas Triantafilo, and Bianca Varai. And that's a lot of names to write. So when I refer to anything we worked on together, I'm going to write E-P-P-S-T-V-V. -P -P all right, so let me get started. So um, throughout this talk, I'm going to use little k to denote um, a global field of characteristic uh, not two. And if you want to be concrete, just um, just think k equals q, and you're really not going to miss anything for this talk. So um, the motivating problem is the following. Um, given a nice variety x over my global field k, so nice means smooth, projective, and geometrically integral, Um, decide if X has a K point. So I think we can all agree that uh, in number theory, this is a this is a big, big thing that we'd like to understand. So let me just do a few examples in the case that our number field is Q. And all of these examples are going to be um, smooth plane conics. So that means a variety which is lives inside projective space of dimension two, the plane, um, it's smooth and it's cut out by an equation of degree two. So my first example is x squared plus y squared equals z squared sitting inside P2 over Q. And if I have this variety um, x, then it's not so hard to work out that uh, x has a rational point um, because uh, we could just write it down. So if I take the point 1, 0, 1 in projective coordinates, um, this is a rational point on x. All right, a little more interesting, I could take as x minus x squared minus y squared equals z squared. And you might have to think a little bit harder about this one. Um, but you'll see that, in fact, it doesn't have a rational point because it doesn't even have a real point. The real points are empty um, because anything that I make over here is going to be a negative real number. Um, but anything I make here is going to be a positive real number unless all of the coordinates are 0, but that's not allowed in P2. So I have no real points for this one. Um, so in particular, no rational points. Um, and another similar example, if I take 2x squared plus 3y squared equals z squared sitting inside P2 over Q. Um, so this one does have real points, um, but it doesn't have three attic points. In fact, it doesn't even have z mod 9z points. You can check. It's very explicit. Um, and so that also says that I have no rational points. So this procedure that I've sort of outlined right here is the first thing you would try if you're trying to understand this motivating problem, if you're trying to decide if you have a point. So this um, first approach to the problem is to decide if x has local points for all places. And if you're working with smooth plane conics, like these examples I wrote down here, that will work. Um, it will help you, I mean, it will answer this motivating problem. You'll be able to decide if you have a rational point. And this is the Haas and Minkowski theorem. So if X is a smooth plane conic, Then the following are equivalent. X has a rational point, this motivating thing we wanted to understand, and 
um, the test that would come from this procedure I've outlined above. So for all places, V of our field K, if I look at the KV points, those are not empty. And I can package all of this information for all of these places as saying that X has an adelic point where AK is just the product over all places V of KV. Okay, so this is great. It says that there's an effective way to decide um, if your variety, if your smooth plane conic has a rational point. And one of these directions is easy. So, so this forward direction, if I have a rational point, then I have an adelic point. Um, this is easy. And it's just the fact that the rational points embed diagonally in the product of all of the KV points. So if I have a rational point, I can consider it as a KV point for every place V. Um, but the reverse uh, is actually uh, the interesting content in this theorem. So uh, wouldn't it be amazing if the reverse uh, was always true? It would give you this procedure for deciding this motivating problem. And so we're gonna formulate that into a, into a definition. So say that some class of varieties satisfies the Hasse principle, which I'll abbreviate HP, if exactly this reverse arrow works. If I know, if knowing that I have adelic points implies that I have rational points for all varieties X in this class. So uh, the Hasse-Minkowski theorem that I just stated here implies, so let's see, let's see, examples of varieties satisfying the Hasse principle and non-examples. Um, so the Hasse-Minkowski theorem says smooth plane conics are uh, an example of variety satisfying the Hasse principle. More generally, uh, you could take quadric hypersurfaces, so varieties, smooth varieties, smooth quadric hypersurfaces, um, in projective space of some higher dimension that are cut out by a single quadratic equation. Um, and let me just point out maybe something uh, which doesn't fit into this are uh, del peso surfaces of degree at least five. So some surfaces that, again, have relatively simple geometry. But once you make the geometry even a little bit more complicated, um, you start getting classes of varieties that don't satisfy the Hasse principle. So if I go from smooth plane conics, which are curves of genus zero, to curves of genus at least one, um, this class of varieties does not satisfy the Hasse principle. There exist varieties in this class that have adelic points, but do not have rational points. Um, I can also take my del peso surfaces of degree at least five. I can make them um, slightly more complicated geometrically. Um, so del peso surfaces of degree of degrees two, three, and four, again, are classes of varieties that do not satisfy the Hasse principle. And okay, well, once you make the geometry even more complicated, uh, examples abound. So K3 surfaces um, and request surfaces. All right, I could go on and on. Um, but what I wanna point out here is that if you want to show that some class of varieties does not satisfy the Hasse principle, if you wanna do any one of these things, then what you need to do is you need to exhibit, exhibit, exhibit some example of X in this class such that X of AK is non-empty, but X of K is empty, which means in particular that you need some way of proving that the rational points are empty without using that the local points are empty. 
And most examples in the literature that do this, um, that do this exact thing, use the brower modern obstruction. So let me very, uh, very briefly recall that. So most, most examples failing the Hasse principle have a brower modern obstruction. Most examples, maybe I should say, in the literature have a brower modern obstruction. All right. So what does this mean? Um, well, uh, if I have a class in the Brouwer group of my variety X, which uh, for the moment, you don't have to know that much about what this means, um, but the Brouwer group is a functor. And so by functoriality, um, I can pull this class back under any maps of another variety into my variety X. In particular, um, this map that will come up a lot that comes from having points. So by functoriality, if I have a point over any field, well, this point is the same data as a map from spec K into my variety X. I'll call that map little x indexed by the point. And so because this Brouwer group is a functor, I can take my Brouwer class alpha in the Brouwer group of X, and I can pull it back under this map and get something now in the Brouwer group of my field K. So applying this idea of functoriality, you see that you get a map from the rational points um, on your variety X. So each of these are maps from spec little K into X. So I can pull back Brouwer classes and, uh, and get Brouwer classes um, for the field K, and I'll call this pullback map evaluation along alpha. And what do I do? I just send a rational point to the Brouwer class, which is pulling back alpha along this map. So that was on the global point side, but I can also do that um, on the local point side. So I can take these adelic points. So these are just the product of the KV points for all V, and I can do the same idea. I can evaluate my Brouwer class alpha, and now I'll land in the product over V of the Brouwer group of KV. And well, the rational points sit inside the adelic points, and the Brouwer group of K diagonally maps to all the Brouwer groups of KV. And so just from functoriality, you see immediately that the rational points on X um, they have to be constrained. They have to sit inside this set of adelic points such that um, when I take these points and I pull back my class alpha and I consider this sitting inside the product of all the Brouwer groups, that this lives inside the image of the Brouwer group of K mapping to the product over all places of the Brouwer group of KV. Again, this just comes from functoriality. But if you know some class field theory, you're probably getting kind of excited because um, we do actually know some more. So from class field theory, this is an injection and the co-kernel is Q mod Z. And this map here is the sum of the invariance. So the Brouwer group of KV, it always injects into Q mod Z. Um, if V is a non-Archimedean place, that's an isomorphism. If it's C, well, then the Brouwer group is trivial. If it's R, then it's um, Z mod 2Z. But um, anyhow, we always have this map. And if you take the sum of all the invariants, then the kernel is exactly the Brouwer group of K. So what this says is that I can phrase this a little bit differently. I can phrase this as all of the local points such that when I take the sum over all places of the invariant at that place of the pullback of my class, that this is zero. So that motivates the definition of this set or the notation for this set. We're gonna call this the set of adelic points that are orthogonal to the class alpha. 
because we have this pairing where we uh, take the sum of the invariants and I have to get zero. And again, this just came from functoriality, but the magic is that this really captures some important relationships between the different um, points over different places that the rational points must satisfy if they're diagonally embedded inside the adelic points. So this actually does give you some information. All right, so a little more notation. So um, given a subgroup B of the Brouwer group of X, um, define the set X AKB to just be the intersection over all Brouwer classes in my subgroup B of the set I've just defined of the classes orthogonal to the to alpha. And so we would say this, these are the Brouwer, sorry, these are the adelic points orthogonal to all alpha in our subgroup B. So in particular, I can take B to be all of the Brouwer group, and then I'll get things that are orthogonal to every Brouwer class. And what you just see up here, I've sort of written it, but let me just write it again. The rational points live inside, well, they we've already seen they live diagonally inside the adelic points, um, but in fact, they live inside the adelic points that are orthogonal to the Brouwer group for every Brouwer class in the Brouwer group. So um, if this set here is non-empty, so I have local points, um, but this intermediate set, which contains the rational points is empty, then that implies that the rational points are empty. And this is one way that I can get a failure of the Hasse principle. I could have the adelic points be not empty, but this Brouwer, Brouwer set, the classes orthogonal to the Brouwer group are empty and so the rational points are forced to be empty. And so if this is the case, in this case, say that X has a brouwer monin obstruction to the Hasse principle. All right, so the thing that I'm gonna be interested in for this talk is what Brouwer classes you actually need to give a brouwer monin obstruction. So if I'm in the setting where this is not empty and this is empty, can I, can I say something more effective about what Brouwer classes I actually need? And this is a question you might care about in practice because for this motivating problem, you want to understand, you want to actually decide if varieties have rational points. And um, for instance, if you have a class of varieties, there are quite a few classes of varieties that have relatively simple geometry, where conjecturally the brouwer monin obstruction is the only obstruction to the Hasse principle. So this is the only thing you have to check if you want to understand if your variety has rational points. So you care about how many classes or what you can say about these classes. So uh, let me make one definition about that. So say that a subgroup B captures the brouwer monin obstruction if it's enough to just take this subgroup to get um, empty rational points. If I just consider this subgroup, I don't need to consider things orthogonal to the entire Brouwer group, I just work with this subgroup. And so the question for this talk is basically, what can we say about uh, the size in an appropriate sense of this subgroup B? And I think there are lots of ways to interpret this that are very interesting. Um, for example, you could ask, uh, what can you say about the orders of the elements in B? And uh, questions of this flavor have been uh, studied before by Skorobogatov and Zarin and Varai and Kreutz and Volok and Nakahara, and they have very interesting results about 
how the necessary orders reflect something about the geometry of your class of varieties. Um, but uh, something different, which is not really present in the literature, is um, about the number of generators that are necessary in your subgroup B. And actually, if you look through the literature at um, examples of brouwer monon obstructions to the Hasse principle, basically they are almost all given by a single Brouwer class. There's just one Brouwer class. And if you look at the adelic points orthogonal to that Brouwer class, then that set is already empty. So a natural question is, well, is that indicative of what goes on? Or can you in fact necessitate many Brouwer classes in order to get an obstruction? And okay, that's our main theorem uh, that actually that is necessary. So here's this theorem. Again, this is uh, joint work with Jennifer Berg, Carlo Pagano, Bjorn Poonen, Mikhail Stroll, Nicholas Triantafilo, Bianca Varai. So uh, for all integers n greater than or equal to one and k a global field of characteristic not two, there exists a nice variety x over this global field such that x has a brouwer monin obstruction to the Hasse principle well, I'm first going to say the Brouwer, the Brouwer set of the classes orthogonal to all of the Brouwer classes are empty, but for all subgroups, I guess I should have mentioned something up here. Sorry. Say a subgroup captures this. Here's the first observation. Maybe I can state this after the question. Um, compactness of X implies that we can always take B to be finite. So this is actually a really, uh, I'm always gonna only need a finite number of generators, um, but what can I say about the size, the number? Okay, so now let me go back to stating the main theorem. So a nice variety, the entire, if I consider the entire Brouwer group, then um, there are no adelic points that are orthogonal to the entire Brouwer group. But for all subgroups, B contained in the Brouwer group of X, um, generated by strictly less than N elements. If I look at the adelic points only orthogonal to this subgroup, then this is non empty. So what this says is that um, there's no upper limit. for the number of Brouwer classes necessary to give an obstruction. This brouwer monon obstruction, it can really require arbitrarily many Brouwer classes, a finite number, but arbitrarily many. All right, are there any questions um, at this point just about the statement of the theorem before I go on to say something about um, how you prove it. All right. So here's the theorem. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Ben, you can right. just unmute and uh, ask away if you have a question. So, sorry, this was a, a mistake. Sorry, I didn't mean okay. to. Ask. Okay, no problem. So, all right. So I think the rest of the time I'm going to explain some of the ideas that go into the proof of this. Um, and it's very constructive. So we're actually going to construct for you uh, nice varieties, which means that I'm actually proving um, a stronger theorem where I'm restricting what the class of this variety is. So in particular, um, it's going to be some class of varieties that um, that themselves cannot have brouwer monon obstructions with a bounded number of classes. Um, all right. So, but to heighten suspense, I'm not going to tell you the class of varieties uh, for a little bit. And first, I just want to say something about how we think about this property here, that 
Um, there are no adelic points that are orthogonal to every Brouwer class, but for all subgroups generated by at most n elements, um, there are adelic points orthogonal to just those classes. So how do we think about this? So the first step in the proof is to uh, reinterpret um, a brouwer modern obstruction in terms of um, the brouwer modern pairing. And that will allow us to see this. This will be some combinatorial condition. Okay, so let's get started. So what do I mean by the brouwer modern pairing? I mean, we already observed that we have this map, we have this pairing between adelic points. So product, product over all places of the local place and the Brouwer group of X to Q mod Z, where I take a tuple of local points and a Brouwer class alpha, and I map this to the sum over all places of the invariant at that place of the pullback of alpha along that adelic point. And the rational points have to be uh, sitting inside the adelic points as things which pair with every alpha to give me zero under this pairing. Okay, so for any finite subgroup, B sitting inside the Brouwer group of X, um, let me write B hat for just the dual, the hom from B to Q mod Z. So then equivalently, I can think about this brouwer and pairing as a map. So I have a map, K, um, 5B from the KV points to B hat, where I send a local point, um, XV, to, well, now I have to give you a map from B to Q mod Z. So for every alpha in V, this is the map that sends alpha to just the invariant at V of the pullback under my local point of the class alpha. All right, and I'm gonna write SV for the image of 5V. And notice this target, right? This doesn't depend on V. So that means I can sum over all places V and I can get a map phi from the adelic points to B hat. And um, I'm gonna write S for the sum of all these images, S V. And now I'm gonna use this map to reinterpret a brouwer monon obstruction. So B captures a brouwer monon obstruction. Well, by definition, this is the same thing as saying that if I look at the points orthogonal to B, that this is empty. So what does this mean? This means um, there does not exist uh, an adelic point that's orthogonal to every class alpha in B, which in terms of this map here says that there's no point here that when I map it to B hat gives me the trivial map from B to Q mod Z. So I can just phrase that as saying, this is the same thing as saying that zero, the trivial map is not in the image of phi, which I was calling S. There's no adelic point that 
that trivially pairs with every single Brouwer class alpha in B. So that was one part that I had to understand, but um, but the theorem said that this Brouwer modern obstruction was not captured by any proper subgroups that were generated by some number of elements. So I can also phrase that combinatorially. So, um, so for all B prime contained in B, um, and maybe let me say no B prime contained in B but not equal to B captures the brouwer monon obstruction. This is the same thing. You can work through this again and you can see that um, what's omitted by the image of phi uh, does not contain a non-trivial subgroup. So this is the combinatorial condition that we have to understand if we want to understand um, if we want to prove that brouwer modern obstructions can require arbitrarily many Brouwer classes. We have to understand the image of this pairing show that it omits zero, but that it does not omit a non-trivial subgroup. And, um, and further for us, for us, for the X's that we're going to consider, um, this B is always just going to be Z mod 2Z to the N, which means that B hat, well, okay, it's also isomorphic to Z mod 2Z to the N. And this condition is the same thing as saying that um, S is exactly B hat, so Z mod 2Z to the N hat minus zero. Because, well, it's just, it's an elementary two group. So if you uh, omit any other element, then you omit a non-trivial subgroup. So, so this problem that we're trying to understand is really going to be about having very large image, maximal image of the brouwer monon pairing um, up to the fact that I have an obstruction. So I omit zero. So I want it to be as big as possible um, given that. And um, so this S, let me just say this in words, this S is the sum of all of the local places, of all of the local SVs. And so if I want this S to omit only zero, I want that for these local SVs, which are only zero for all but finitely many, I want these non-zero SVs to sum up to only, um, to everything except for zero. And there's one kind of obvious way to do that. It's to prescribe. So one way to do this, one combinatorial solution is to prescribe um, SV naught to be everything except for zero, Z mod two Z to the N hat minus zero um, for some place V naught and that SW is simply zero for all W not equal to V naught. That's kind of the most, that's the most basic way to have this happen um, is that it happens all at one place, uh, but there are other combinatorial solutions. So we prove in an appendix to our paper um, that there is some constraint on the combinatorial solutions to this problem. The number of places where this set SV can have size at least two, so be sort of non-trivial, um, is bounded by the F2 dimension of B. So that's N minus one. So there's some bound on this and that's a sharp bound. But in any event, if you're only caring about the main theorem that you can require arbitrarily many generators, then uh, it suffices to use this combinatorial solution. So given this setup, um, you're probably motivated that the way that we're gonna concretely solve this problem of exhibiting varieties that require arbitrarily many Brouwer classes to have an obstruction is that um, we want to prescribe what these images of the brouwer monon pairing SV um, are. So this is our more precise theorem. 
that implies theorem one. So theorem two, again, it's joint work. So let K be a global field. of characteristic not two. And you get to choose any N and R, which are greater than or equal to zero, and any sets S1 through SR, which are subsets of Z mod 2Z to the N hat. So this is like prescribing, well, you might imagine this is prescribing what the images of these uh, brouwer monin pairings are at finitely many places. That's what we're going to do. So given this data, there exists a nice variety X over K um, and an injection from Z mod 2Z to the N into the Brouwer group of X. So this is going to be our subgroup B and places V1 through VR. So these are the places at which I'm going to realize these sets as the image of the brouwer monin pairing, um, such that, well, uh, exactly what you want, the image of phi vj, so this is what I was calling S, sorry, svj, this is my set sj that I got to arbitrarily decide for all j. Two, uh, for all other places, the image um, W, this is SW, is simply zero for all W not equal to VJ. And finally, um, there's no, there's nothing else in the Brouwer group that could give you an obstruction. So this, if I take this injection from Z mod 2Z to the N into the Brouwer group of X, and I compose with the projection where I quotient by the image of the Brouwer group of the ground field sitting inside the Brouwer group of X, which I'm going to call Brouwer X bar because it will come up again, then this composition, this is an isomorphism. And these things in the Brouwer group of K, they can't give you obstructions to the Brouwer, to the, to the Hasse principle. So what this third point is saying is that there's no other classes that could give you an obstruction. All right, so in my remaining time, uh, my remaining 10 minutes, I think I want to say a little bit about how you prove this theorem, but first let me make it more precise. Here's the, I, I said I was, for dramatic suspense, I wasn't telling you the class of varieties, but you might guess based on all the setup what this class of varieties is. So this is going to be a conic bundle over P1 um, that's split by a constant quadratic extension. So it's a more precise theorem. You can realize any images of the brouwer monin pairing that you want by such conic bundles. OK, so let me say something uh, first about these conic bundles, and then I'll say something about what goes into the proof of this more precise theorem. So first, um, conic bundles. split by this constant quadratic extension. So I am adjoining the square root of some element A from my field K um, that is uh, not a square already. So it's not already um, a split conic bundle. So how do I give this? So this is going to be attached to a choice um, of a polynomial F, uh, which is going to be square free. And for uh, for nice for nice reasons where I'll mention why I'm always going to assume that this is even degree. So then uh, this conic bundle given by the choice of this uh, non-square class A and this F, it's nothing other than smooth compactification of uh, y squared minus a z squared equals f of u. All right, so let's stare at this equation a little bit and notice that there's a map from x 
to P1 with coordinate U that just sends um, Y, Z, and U to just U. So here's P1, I'm fixing U. If I fix U, then when I take this compactification, um, the fiber over any point, it looks like the conic, which is Y squared minus AZ squared equals whatever that F of U was times W squared in the compactification. So generically, um, that's a smooth conic. But there's finitely many points in the base where f of u is zero. And if f of u is zero, then you see that I get the singular conic, which is y squared minus a z squared. It's not a smooth plane conic. Um, and if you had a square root of a, then you could, then you could uh, take a difference of squares, and this would be the union of just two lines. But I specifically assumed that we don't have a square root of a in the ground field. So these geometrically look like the union of two lines, but they're they're not uh, they're not defined over the ground field. But if I was to pass to this constant quadratic extension where I join a square root of a, then all of these do become split. All right. And this even degree assumption, this is exactly saying that the fiber over infinity um, is smooth. It's not one of these, um, not one of these singular conics. So why is this a nice class of varieties? I mean, this these conic bundles split by these constant extensions, uh, these are some of the first varieties where Brauermann and obstructions were exhibited. And one reason that makes them so nice is that we very concretely understand what the Brouwer group is for this variety. So um, so if my f of u factors as f naught of u times f1 of u dot 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 all the way through fn of u. So if this is a factorization where each of these fi's are um, even degree and um, this extension that splits my conic bundle, so k alpha is not contained in the splitting field. So these are you see, explicitly irreducible of even degree. Um, not contained in the splitting field. Then under this assumption, the quaternion algebras, A comma Fi of U, which a priori only live in the Brouwer group of the function field. They're in fact pullbacks from the Brouwer group of the function field of P1. These in fact live in the Brouwer group of my variety XAF. So I have a source of Brouwer classes. In fact, you can see right here, I've, I've written down for you n plus one Brouwer classes. They're all two torsion. So this is looking kind of good for what we wanted. Um, but uh, furthermore, we can say that these classes A F naught through A F N, they generate the Brouwer quotient so when we quotient by um, by constant, as they and um, there's only one relation, which is that they all sum to zero. So if I take a f naught plus dot 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 plus a f n, this is the same thing as the Brouwer class, where I take their product, which was f, which is you notice the class of the conic bundle itself, and so this is is zero. And that's the only relation. So in particular, this implies that the Brouwer group of XAF, the Brouwer quotient, is isomorphic to Z mod 2Z to the N. So here we have a variety which has lots of Brouwer classes. So we'd hope that this is a variety where we can use these Brouwer classes to prescribe arbitrary images of the brouwer in pair. So given that setup, I'd now like to just briefly sketch the steps in the proof of theorem two. So steps in the proof of theorem two. So um, step one is, so theorem two says we can arbitrarily prescribe the image of the brouwer monin pairing at finitely many places. So I want to do the 
that all of these finitely many places I'm trying to prescribe, they're all actually just everything in Z mod 2Z to the end. Hat, because I'm taking the dual. Um, so this is very different than what you would want if you wanted to write down a brower monon obstruction, right? In that case, if you want a brower monon obstruction that's that's uh, captured by, by um, well, just if you want a brower monon obstruction, zero can't be in the image. And I'm saying that the image is everything. But somehow thinking about the problem in this way, where I think about arbitrarily prescribing these images of the brower monon pairing, uh, it leads you to also consider these surjective cases, and it turns out that's that's going to be enough by a by um, a trick that I hopefully will say something about to get everything. So first, I do this special case. Um, so uh, so let me just say verbally because I don't have a lot of time. So I'm going to choose f not through f n uh, to multiply together to get f. I'm going to choose them all to be monic and irreducible and separable of even degree. Um, but other than that, you have a lot of flexibility. I'm going to choose my places where uh, where I'm going to get these. So these are going to be for i equals 1 to r. I'm going to choose my places to be, um, well, let me just explain this in the case k equals q. So I'm going to choose my places to be primes that are sufficiently large. So p1 through pr are going to be sufficiently large. And this a that goes into the theorem it's just going to be the product of all of these P1 through PR. So my claim is once I have this set up, then um, this is enough to guarantee that um, this brouwer monon pairing map alpha um, phi P is surjective for all P, which are these finitely many places. And uh, the reason for this is is um, is kind of nice. So what is this brouwer monon pairing? It goes from, well, it goes from the QP points on X, which are the same as the ZP points on X. And if I want to sew surjectivity, um, it's enough to look at the points that just live over A1. I'm going to ignore infinity for right now. And this goes to the map. Uh, which explicitly is Hom from this group. Well, it's the it's the Z mod 2Z to the N generated by these Brouwer classes. So AF naught through AFN with the one relation that the sum of all the AFIs is zero. So this is really a Z mod 2Z to the N. Um, it goes to, to Q mod Z, but all of these classes are two torsion. So it goes to one half Z mod Z. Um, and what do I do? Well, I send some tuple y, z, u to, okay, well, I have to evaluate my class um, a, f, i on this tuple y, z, u. And you see that the y and z, they totally don't matter here. All that matters is the u. And, and so where does this actually go? This sends a class a, f, i. Well, evaluation, I just plug in u into f, i. And I consider if this is a trivial Brouwer class or not. And if fi is, is not zero modulo fi of u is not zero modulo p, then this is the map that just sends this to um, the Legendre symbol of fi of u mod p on p. So all that I care about here are the square classes of these fi's. And so the special case is implied by the following um, lemma. So if P is sufficiently large, depending only on N and the degrees of these FIs, I can arbitrarily set um, the square classes of the FIs, so of F1 through Fn um, in Fp star mod Fp star squared. So I can arbitrarily set these square classes with the only relation that, of course, they all have to multiply to zero because 
I have this relation in the Brouwer group. And the proof of this lemma is just the Langve estimates for counting points on varieties over finite fields. Because setting square classes can be interpreted as a set of quadrat, I mean, a set of equations where I want fi of u to be equal to something, some square class times x squared, et cetera. And the intersection of all of those defines for me a variety over fp, and I can count its fp points. So if p is large, the Langve estimates will imply that I have a point there. All right, I'm mostly out of time, so let me just briefly say where uh, what step two is. So in step two, so we've constructed this thing, xaf, mapping to P1, where for finitely many places, the evaluation is, is surjective. So if I look at the, if I look at, say, the ZP points here, um, this breaks up as some collection of, um, of disks where, um, which are given by the elements, congruence with the elements that gives me these arbitrarily many square classes. But so, so these disks give me um, everything in Z mod 2Z to the N hat when I evaluate over those disks, but I would just like to prescribe my S to contain just some of the disks. And so what we do is we show that you can always take a pullback. You can always take a pullback by some map G. So now this is another one of these conic bundles, but I have my new polynomial is F composed with G. And what's special about this is if I look at any one of these ZP points, it will map me entirely into the set where I have the image that I want for S. And so, uh, of course, there's some details to show here that the Brouwer group, um, that you can always choose this G so that the Brouwer group here is generated by just the classes A comma F composed with G. Um, but these are all finitely many local conditions and, and we can satisfy those. And so taking pullback, once you have surjectivity, you can get something arbitrary. All right, I'm finished. <laughs>